I've got good news and I've got bad news and bad news. The bad news is I'm injured. The good news is it's a great opportunity to tell you about how to deal with injuries, but also to take you to Utah's best physical therapist for runners. So, hello. And get his insight on this topic. And the bad news, in 2024, I cannot afford a house mortgage. <laughs> but that's not even news, that's just common knowledge. I have posterior tibia tendinopathy. So it's on the inner part of my shin. So like right along here. Um, the physical therapist told me that I could have triggered a stress fracture if I continued running on it. So since then I've been cross training. Today what I'm doing, I'm going to be splitting it up between some running and some cross training. But before we do that, I have to do my physical therapy exercises. Let's get those in. Welcome to my beautiful home. What's that? I need to take down Christmas, but I love Christmas. <laughs> With those out of the way, I'm headed to the gym and then to run. And then hopefully I can show you what the physical therapist is doing and why maybe it's a good idea for you to consider using one next time you're injured or worried about injury. Try to get in about 45 minutes before we head out to the run. Okay, just finished about 50 minutes on the elliptical. I'm Driving over to the long run with the Utah Marathon crew. All the people that I would have been running at the trials with had I just not cramped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ended up getting a little over 11 and I am happy to report that my leg is feeling good. I'm just gonna keep continuing to be cautious. I'm gonna go see the physical therapist on Tuesday again, get treated. I'll catch back up with you there. I'm here to get treated. But one of the biggest reasons that I love um, having someone like a physical therapist uh, to, to treat me. When you're injured, you can't keep training the way you wanna be training. And what a physical therapist can do is give you treatment that allows you to be able to continue to train at the level you want to, even while you have an injury. Let's get inside. Time to get changed. I wonder if I can do a jump transition. Go like this. Did it work? That was pretty cool. I'm here with uh, Scotty McKeel. He is the best physical therapist in the state of Utah for runners. <laughs> I am not at all biased. Welcome to the channel. Hello. <laughs> we are going to do some dry needling with Michael today. He has what we call posterior tibialis tendinopathy, otherwise known as shin splints. So medial shin splints, not anterior shin splints. So it's the pain that you'll feel right in the inside of your shin. It can actually also be felt all the way down in the ball of your foot or in the heel of your foot. So we're gonna do some dry needling today. We're also gonna do some soft tissue work to help guide this in the line of treatment, but also make sure that he's able to continue to train and not have to take time off. A lot of people wonder, what should we do when I get injured? And I always tell people, there are three tiers of treatment when we're thinking about physical therapy. So tier one or line one is the actual treatment itself. So the hands-on treatment, that might be dry needling, like we're doing now. It might be soft tissue mobilization, joint mobilization, stretching, um, massage. Those are all great things to help the treatment of the actual injury in the here and now to help you continue to train without taking time off. Um, however, if you go one step further, tier two, it is stuff like looking at what might be causing the injury. So for instance, maybe finding exercises um, for the foot or ankle or for the hip or knee that are gonna help prevent this injury from coming back or maybe figure out why it happened in the first place. So that's kind of the second line of defense that is gonna be helping Michael maybe not have to frequent the physical therapist as much. Make sure that he's not you know, having this become a reoccurrent thing in, in future seasons. And then the third line of defense is looking at the big picture thing. So sleep, nutrition, training, um, what type of footwear you're in, looking at that as a whole, digesting it and figuring out, do we need to tweak the training? Do we need to make sure that you're putting in better quality nutrition into your diet? Um, do we need to make sure that your sleep is a little bit better? Uh, and those things are gonna be the big picture that actually make sure that he's not getting injured as a whole in the future. 
Yep. As we get into this very, very small space, the posterior tibialis, I'm finding about a two to three millimeter space to kind of shimmy this needle deep into the posterior tibialis, and then we're actually gonna connect it to some electricity here. Electricity here. Fatiguing contraction. Two to three millimeters, that is precision. It is always makes me nervous. And you're gonna let me know when you start feeling it. I feel a little twitch in my foot now. Good. And I'm actually looking for contractions, and we're seeing just some minimal contraction there. You can actually see the posterior tibialis being contracted, as well as what we call the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus. So all three of those muscles could be getting stimulated right now, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we're gonna do some Graston or some what we call IA stem. And so for this part, I'm gonna have you flip over. You might wonder, when should you come to physical therapy or when should you even make a visit or schedule an appointment with a healthcare provider as a runner. Um, and it might be like, hey, I wanna be preventative and I wanna look at something to make sure I'm not gonna get injured. You can totally do that. You can visit a um, sports medicine physician to get labs run. You can visit your um, running specific physical therapist who could take you through a gait analysis to look at what your biomechanics look like. Um, and then maybe if you're starting to feel an injury, um, coming on, that's a great time before it turns into a full-blown injury so you can get it taken care of right away. We always say, don't let a whisper turn into a scream. You're gonna appreciate it because you're not gonna have to sit out for weeks and weeks of training. Well, thanks for the treatment, Scotty. Really appreciate it. You got it. You are the man. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Swallow your pride. If you have some nagging pain that's getting progressively worse, stop running. Every day you continue to run on it could mean weeks of added recovery time. Worst case scenario, you're not actually injured and you just cross train a couple days instead of running. If you do feel like you have a running injury that's taking you away from running, don't stop training altogether, just back off to the maximum level at which you're still able to heal. Scotty taught me the FIT rule, meaning you can back off in frequency, intensity, or time until you're not making your injury any worse. Plus, if you add in physical therapy treatment, then your tolerance for your training can increase quite a bit. Be patient with yourself. The best thing you can do is to get your treatment, get your rest, do your exercises, and do whatever training you have prescribed. Feeling around the area or running around and jumping around your house trying to test it out is only gonna make things worse and take longer to heal. That's gonna do it for today. I hope that this video can help you to stay healthy and let you spend more time running and less time whining about your injury. Thanks for watching, see you next time.